So the whole problem starts with your uranium ore, which is having only 0.7 percentage of uranium-235 and 99.3 percent is uranium-238. So if you want to produce power continuously, even for that, you are going to require three to five percent of uranium. So if you look at uranium-233 and uranium-235, there's only one difference. What's the difference? The difference is the atomic weight. So the first method that they started to work with during the World War II, and this is the time of Project Manhattan, what happened in America. Uh, if I remember the place, yeah, it is Oak Ridge, Tennessee. So they created a uranium enrichment plant and their method at that time was diffusion. So diffusion, what will happen is that I'm going to pass uranium gas now, this might be a little confusing to you guys, but solid uranium, how, how are you going to diffuse anything which is solid? So what they turn into is uranium hexafluoride, UF6. Once this gas is formed, now you can pass it through a lot of membranes. So all of it will not be separated. A lot of times both U2, U235 and U38 will be passing through the membrane because like I said, the mass difference is very negligible. But because of that, they are having a whole array of these membranes and these U UF6 uh, molecules are going to diffuse through them. And over time, after hundreds and hundreds of this passing, you are ultimately going to get an enriched uranium. You keep on doing it more and more and you are going to reach somewhere around 90% of enriched uranium. So if you look at the formula of diffusion, it is very simple. Diffusion is inversely proportional to under root of mass. And you can look at it this way as well, since six fluoride fluorine atoms are added. So the overall mass becomes even larger and the fraction of U235 becomes even smaller. So now the mass difference is even smaller compared to what you would have as a just solid uranium 235 or 238 so diffusion is uh, the rate is so less so basically diffusion inversely proportional to under root of mass means that if you are having a lighter atom then the diffusion will be faster as you would expect right now if you do the simple calculation you will understand that the improvement in every phase, and this is very well explained by a professor from University of Illinois, is that diffuse, I'm going to link it down in the description box as well. So the improvement in every phase is only 1.0043. You get the point. So initially, if you are having a uranium 235, which is comprising of 0.7 percentage, the next time it would be 0.7 into 1.0043. If you do the math, you are going to get 0.70301. So it's a very small fraction that you are increasing. And that is why you will need to do multiple of these diffusion through a lot of membranes. So it's a extremely slow process because what you are getting as an improvement is very less. Uh, it is like, uh, it is less than 1%. It is 0.43 percentage. Now, because of that, this whole method of diffusion is obsolete now. Now what they use is something that some of you guys might have heard the name of, is the centrifuge technology. And what it does is that, obviously, if you're having two different elements, one is heavier than the other, the heavier element is going to spread in the outside direction, right? Because centrifugal force is proportional to the mass. Again, mass is involved and again, the problem is that the mass difference is very small between 235 and 238, right? So centrifuge, it does nothing, but it revolves at a very, rotates at a very high velocity and the U38 part goes on the outer periphery and U35 stays in the middle and you suck the U35 out. But the first time you suck it, it's not going to be like all U35. I think that that much you were expecting. So that is why there are again series and arrays of these centrifuge machines and there are thousands of these machines. Now, for the first time that I heard this thousands of these machines, I was like, get out of here. That, that number is definitely wrong. You need to fix it. But then I found out that it only enriches it by a, frac a factor of 1.5, which is not much better than 1.0043. But if you look at that, 
then that factor is still not that much so that is why you really require thousands of these centrifuges to over time get even three to five percentage of enriched uranium which is having like three to five percentage of u-235 and uh, that is the thing that i was talking about this is the same technology of reaching it up to 90 percent as well all you need to do is keep on running this process for a longer duration and more machines more arrays and you're over time going to reach the weapons grade uranium which is the problem that a lot of countries which do not want new countries working on uranium technologies be be dabbling with and that is the whole area of debate so that's pretty much that gives you a good idea of what is uranium enrichment it is a big roadblock to any country which is trying to produce weapons grade uranium and which is a sigh of relief to a lot of countries which already has weapons grade uranium so you can have the mastery of nuclear fission technology a lot of countries which do not have nuclear bombs have nuclear technology for power production but this is the one uh, segregating part which is going to uh, give you uh, access to nuclear weapons that is the uranium enrichment it's a very important topic to be discussed over here and apart from that uh, see like i said that uranium 238 is not fissile but it is fertile and in a similar manner there's something else which is not fissile but is fertile guessed it.